Hi guys, this is Frenchy, and you know that I love using Color Slice in DaVinci Resolve. This tool is really easing the process of putting density and subtractive saturation in our grades, and it is free in DaVinci Resolve. It's fantastic, but I have some problems with it. In this video, I will tell you the problems that I have with this tool. At the end of the video, you will know the limitation of the tool and also uh, how to avoid these problems in the future. Before we jump to the tutorial, this video is brought by me. I am putting together a masterclass and I really want it to be tailored to your needs as colorists. In the link in the description, you're going to find a questionnaire that will help me to understand what is your need and what you expect from a class. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer to it. You are the best and it helps me greatly. Let's stop babbling and go into the tutorial. So here we are guys in our timeline and uh, I'm going to show you what is my real issue with Color Slice. So Color Slice, as I said in the intro, is a wonderful tool. I mean, I use it quite often in my grade, but there is something that I need to tell you because I think it would avoid you a lot of problems after in your grades uh, and in your jobs. So my real big issue with Color Slice is technically the selection of each vector of color. So I'm just going to explain myself. I've done a grade really quickly to, for us to have a better understanding of uh, what's going on. Let's say I want to apply some subtractive saturation or density to this grade. What I'm going to do is just like going to color slice and then like just play around with uh, the different vectors, right? So let's say I want to have my skin more dense. I will go to my density selection and I can increase my density over here, which is very convenient. Or uh, I can increase the subtractive saturation to make it more saturated, but at the same time darker. So it is very, very convenient. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you are just using the highlight tool, you're going to see what is selected in the vector skin color. And in the vector skin color, of course, we have skin. But the thing is, we have a lot of noise. So what's going on here is that uh, we have the software that is just recognizing that the color is in one vector and we only take this one vector. What is good with Blackmagic is that when they put Color Slice in DaVinci Resolve 19, they basically try to solve this problem with the center tool. The center tool is technically moving around your selection to have maybe less noise uh, in your image. So if you see in uh, my wheel, I will move around my vector that is represented here. Okay. The thing is, it is a good tool and can be useful in some cases. But the problem is that I find that it is not broad enough sometimes. So if you see, I can just go to one extreme, which is like the end of my pieces of the camembert. I don't know how to uh, call that, but it's the end of my piece of camembert here. And you know, if I go the other way, I can only go to the max of my piece of my camembert. The problem is that Sometimes skin can sit somewhere else uh, in, for example, my color wheel, because sometimes skin can be way more magenta-ish or skins can be way more yellow. And so it is the same problem, actually, because if, for example, my skin sits more in the red side, I can go to the red side and then like move around my center. But if I move around my center, it will create also a lot of noise, if you see, because the selection is not broad enough. So what I would love in Color Slice would be, for example, the same principle as HDR wheels. So if you don't know, you can change the range of what your light here is taking. So I can go to this menu and I will have a control center over here. 
where I can actually affect my range of light. So here I am with the light selected. And so I can affect my range. And so I can have it broader or I can have it tinier, you know. And so I can really tailor what the light is taking in my image because I have actually the whole spectrum to play with. So of course, I am aware that I am comparing the color slice with a light model, which are in the HDR wheel. But the thing is, if it is possible to have broader selection for the color slice for each vector, that would be amazing. And maybe actually combine vectors together because I feel that, for example, the red and the skin could be combined together sometimes. Most of the time, my red would take in consideration the lips. And so, of course, I want to affect the skin. Having maybe the red and the skin coupled together would work maybe better because I want also the lips to follow kind of the treatment that I have on the overall skin most of the time. Of course, there is some exception, but most of the time, I want the effect to be natural. And so I want the lips to follow what I do to the skin. So this is my first point. The selection is a bit too tiny and too precise for the shots. My second problem is that because the selection is a bit too precise, it can create some uh, breaking in the color. So for example, if I want to really max out my density and my subtractive saturation, you can see what is happening on my skin. And it is really creating some noise and some breakage. So you can see that the transition between the color of my skin to the color of my grade is now super sharp. There is no way that I can deliver a grade like that. Sometimes for artistic choices, I will need to increase quite a lot the subtractive saturation and maybe also the density. And the problem that I have with color slice is that sometimes I will have to use special noise reduction to clean out my breakage, which is not at all ideal because you are breaking the image and after you are putting a plaster on it. Don't do that. <laughs> so my advice when you are using color slice is that be aware that your footage can break. So be mindful on how much you are putting some subtractive saturation and some density because, you know, sometimes even for me, I got carried into this. And so then like I realized that it was introducing more noise in my footage that it was helping my footage. So just be mindful that Color Slice is a great tool. It's a great free tool, but it can increase noise in your footage depending on how you are using the tool. Color Slice is amazing. It's an amazing tool. I use it so often, you know, in my color grading. It's just that you need to be aware of uh, the problem with Color Slice right now. Maybe in another update of DaVinci Resolve, they will solve the problem of this selection. But for the moment, this is how it is in DaVinci Resolve 19. I also want to show you a solution to create some subtractive saturation uh, without uh, using HSL or HSV and having a sort of a selection tool that is a bit cleaner than a color slice. So right now here in this grade, I can use the DCTL from Core Hendrickson, which is the hue versus subsaturation. This one is an old one, so maybe he did some update on it. I just have the old one on my machine, but sometimes I will use it if, for example, my color slice is a bit jerky in terms of noise introduction. So I can, with this DCTL, go to a highlight mode, so highlight selection, and try to see which selection I have. I kind of prefer sometimes this way of doing things because it introduces a bit less noise and you can really tailor your mat, if you see. So with few widths and you target. 
after you have a global subsaturation slider. So then like you can really regulate the saturation you want to put in your image. I find that this is pretty clean. I like it. The only downside with this DCTL is that if you want to target multiple colors, then you will need to create more nodes dedicated to one color vector. So this is the downside for it. That is why I still prefer to use Color Slice because it's an all-in-one tool. And this is free also for our fellow free version DaVinci Resolve. I hope my video helped and I hope my video also helped you to take some steps back to the Color Slice because of course Color Slice is amazing, but be careful of the um, noise introduction. So the real problem with color size is the selection because then even with the center, you can't really avoid the noise creation. So just try to doze what you are putting in your image. Always be mindful of uh, what it can create. Subscribe to the channel. We are almost 10,000 and thank you so much for that. And I see you for the next video. See you guys.